Hi guys, it's Macapussy here and we're back with another song reaction and today we're going to be doing Queen of the Murder Scene by The Warning live at Teatro Metropolitan CDMX. I don't know if I've said that right or not. I know this is Tuesday and so ordinarily I'd be doing two for Tuesday. But this is my channel and I make the rules and I've decided I'm dropping it today to go and listen to more of The Warning because I kinda wanna see if I wanna buy tickets for this bloody gig. All of you guys have been going, aye. Buy tickets for the gig. Buy tickets for the gig. I can't afford it because my bloody car broke down and now I'm having to pay to get my car fixed. So, I don't know if I can go to this damn gig or not and I'm annoyed. So, we're going to listen to this song and hopefully it will cheer me up a bit. The beginning of that started with a kind of quite, quite a kind of old school hard rock riff, which was kind of cool. It was kind of different. I've only listened to two songs of the one, but it's different from what I've heard from the previous two songs. And then they went into that wee kind of cool, almost metal riff, kinda. I'll be honest, melodically, I wasn't actually listening to the singing. I was too busy listening to the guitar lines. So I'm going to take it back and listen to what the hell they were singing. Really wanna This feels a little more prog than their previous stuff. Their previous stuff is like pretty straight up rock. As I've said in previous reactions, they were like the structures were quite classical. It was just here's a riff, here's a verse, pre-chorus, chorus, repeat, bridge, chorus, end. That was that's how they've written their songs. So far, this has been a wee bit kind of off the beaten path, which is kind of nice, it's kind of interesting. The actual compositions within the music they're doing is a bit, bit more kind of complex than what, what I'm used to hearing from the Wallen. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. The backing singing, which I have up until this point been assuming was the bass player, is actually the drummer, which is pretty cool, because that isn't easy. Okay, this is nothing like what I was expecting. I don't even know what you say to this. Right, so, firstly, she's got a lot more of a grit and a growl to her voice in this song than in the previous songs, and I think that really works. It's somewhere between, like, a clean vocal and, say, like, a Courtney Love grunge vocal. And I think she's found the right balance between those two because clean vocal would not work for this kind of music at all. I think the grunge vocal would be too much. I think she, I think she's got it pretty much perfect musically. This is all over the fucking map. 
The riffs are really cool. They're a lot more intricate than what I was u- than what I'm used to from these guys. It's harder to digest on a first listen because it's got more moving parts and it doesn't follow just a normal structure. But I don't think that is particularly a negative. It just means that there's a more of a reason for me to go back and listen to it again in my own time, which is fine. <laughs> I'm kind of interested to see how this sounds on the album. This is quite heavy, but there's only three of them playing. So, there's only so much you can do with one guitar, one bass and a drum kit. Especially considering that she is playing the lead parts constantly. So, I think in the studio version, there would obviously be a second track guitar that was playing rhythm stuff, which would make it heavier and probably give it more body. I mean, I'm I'm fine with them not having that. There's constraints to what you can do with three people in a band. It's the same as when the Deftones are playing. They've only got, they've got four people, but one of them's just singing. So they've only got three instrumentalists, and there's a lot missing <laughs> from, from their live performances on the studio version. But what they lack in that, they make up for an in intensity, and this is kind of the same. A perfect scene of motherhood, a queen You can't always tell what's a mortal boy It just doesn't apply to me Okay, here is a nitpick. I know I've interrupted the solo, but any band made fans will let you know that's just gonna fucking happen. Deal with it. But <laughs> the bass tone in this part, I'm not a huge fan of, and here's why. These guys are massive fans of Muse. That translates into a lot of how they've written certain things, and the bass is doing quite a lot in here to kind of fill in some of the gaps in the music because she, because they are just doing a solo and she's doing quite a good job of that but I think if she had a bass distortion pedal at this point that was adding a bit more thickness to her notes when she's doing the high notes the high notes are a bit too trebly and they're a bit too weak sounding it's, it's possibly better in the actual venue when Muse uses their bass as the lead instrument he's usually got a distortion pedal on it to give it a bit more kind of oomph and I feel like this would have benefited from that it's a tiny thing I'm just saying it would have been nice with a distortion pedal and you know what I'm willing to change my mind on that as well because I haven't heard it with a distortion pedal there's every chance that she could put the distortion pedal on and you'd go oh that sounds dreadful get that to fuck <laughs> oh, I'll take it back to the solo I'm aware that you guys have watched that entire guitar solo there and been like, oh, she's absolutely shredding the fuck out of that guitar. All that I thought was, that's a fucking sweet bass line. (laughs) It's just just a cool bass line. I don't really care for guitar solos that much. 
if I'm being totally honest. They don't really do much for me. They're fine. There are some excellent guitar solos out there that absolutely enhance the song. Most guitar solos, I feel, are just there to pass some time. Buddy Holly by Weezer. Excellent guitar solo. Excellent guitar solo. A classic. Yeah, open your eyes, cause you can't even see the fact that I just can't be controlled, boy. Anything but a let see you try. I'm a machine of emotion. A perfect scene of over. I'm going to say more metal than I was expecting it to be, more prog than I was expecting it to be. I will say, out of the three that I've listened to so far, probably my least favourite, but I think that's purely because it's the least accessible of the three. In no way does that mean it's a bad song, it just means I think the first two were like straight up rock bangers that I was immediately able to go, yeah, that's cool. And this one I've been a bit more kind of, uh, oh, 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 I need to take some time on that one. People kept on saying to me, oh, you should go listen to The Warning. You should go and check out The Warning. And I was just like, hi, cool. All right, guys. And I'm really glad that I've, I'm really glad that I finally listened. Yeah, solid band. Happy with that. Tell me, guys, what did you think? Is there anything I've said in this video so far that has upset you in some way? If there is, sound off in the comments. Excellent song, excellent song. Guys, that was The Warning, Queen of the Murder Scene. I've been Mark Abusi. Hope you had a nice Christmas. You've got a lot of leftover Christmas dinner for Boxing Day. See you guys next time. Thank you very much for watching.